You're listening to 90.7 WCLH. This is Kendall from Metal Mondays, but I'm here on the phone today with White Snake guitarist Joel Hoekstra. Joel, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks, and it's a pleasure having you on. Uh, so you're on tour right now with White Snake, the Greatest Hits Tour. You just had a show last night. I looked it up in New Jersey. How was that show, and how has this tour been going? Uh, it was great. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's it's been great. I mean, we're obviously we're on the Greatest Hits Tour, so it's if you're a White Snake fan, it's like your dream set. You're just gonna hear like all the recognizable songs that you can sing along with and have fun and that comfort level there. So that's making the band's job so easy. When you've got a set full of just every song is fantastic, it certainly makes your job really kind of easy. You just play them down and the crowd goes nuts. And we got got obviously a killer lineup, David Coverdale, of course, and uh, Tommy Aldridge on drums and, and uh, myself and Reb Beach on guitar. So we're having a good time out here. The band is getting along. David's singing well. The band is playing well. So it's just been like a little bit of rock and roll bliss. Yeah, and that's great. And I know a lot of people do love coming to a show and being able to hear all the familiar songs. Um, so, And not only am I talking with you because I'm a fan and I track down a lot of these bands that I love and play on my show, but you'll be coming here with White Snake. In wilkes uh, you'll you have a show July 2nd at the Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to it. I've obviously I've played wilkes Spare plenty, plenty of times with Trans-Siberian Orchestra, who I also uh, play with. So it's exciting for me to be coming there with Whitesnake, and hopefully some people will recognize me, and hopefully everybody will come out and have some fun. Yeah, last time I saw you perform, it was with the Trans-Siberian Orchestra at the arena, and now you'll be at the casino. Um, now, are you familiar with the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, uh, Hazleton area? Like, uh, besides just coming to shows, do you know about the area? <laughs> yeah, well, just like the day, you know, the time you spend wandering around before you head to the venue when yeah. you stop in with you. So, uh, it, so very little. I mean, I think there was, I think in Scranton we had like a Thanksgiving there one year. It might have been 2014. So, I mean, I've had a day or two to wander around the area. Obviously, it's a um, it's a great rock town. It's a great great area for people who love rock and roll. So, um, hopefully, we get um, get a good turnout and have a nice high energy show for everybody. Yeah, and I was gonna travel to like New Jersey to see you guys, but I was very happy to see that you were playing right here in Wilkes Bear. Do you ever notice anything different? I know you said this is like a, a good. Uh, we have a lot of rock fans here. Uh, do you ever notice anything different between East Coast and West Coast fans at all? Uh, I guess over the years, you know, it's amazing to me is you learn that these international and national acts that you play with still have certain pockets that they're bigger in. Like I spent seven years playing with Night Ranger before mm -hmm. I joined White Snake, and Night Ranger broke out of the Bay Area, the San Francisco area, and still that's where the shows are the biggest. It's totally amazing. You go, oh, wow, isn't that weird? Like it makes a difference from playing in you know the East Coast with Night Ranger as opposed to the San Francisco area. And um, White Snake is very much a band that broke out of the U.K., there was out like lots of albums that came out before they even broke here in the states, and it's still that way. And we can go to the UK and just draw, you know, boatload people. So uh, that's always amazing to me that you take these international and national acts, and it still makes a difference where they broke out of. Yeah, and and this is White Snake's greatest hits tour. Uh, the only album you've played on so far is the Purple album, correct? Correct. And that's like the Deep Purple covers. Um, so I'm asking about... Well, it's not really covers. Uh, David wrote the song. Well, yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, so David was in Deep Purple and wrote the songs. It was just White Snake's kind of reworkings of what he did with Deep Purple. So, um, yeah, I don't like to call it a covers album, really. It's more of like a paying tribute to what David did like early on in his career. Yeah. So now you're playing the greatest hits of White Snake, so... When you play the solos of, say, Sykes, Aldrich, Vandenberg, uh, how true are you to their compositions when you're on stage? Or can you or do you want to incorporate some of your own style when you're playing uh, solo? It's a, it's a judgment call in all areas. It's definitely a delicate dance. You know, you learn the original versions, and I spent a lot of time learning uh, what Doug Aldrich was doing with those original versions, um, because obviously he was in the band for, I think, 12 years leading up to my time. So 
um, people can tend to get used to hearing what they've heard for the last 12 years as well. So mm-hmm. I definitely familiarized myself with the originals and what Doug Aldrich was playing and, of course, like put my own spin on it as I go. And, um, you know, the stage presence thing is such a huge part of what I do that I get a lot of my individualism out in that department. And uh, we have our own guitar solos on a company during the, sh- the White Snake show as well. So, I mean, it's... Um, I definitely get my individuality out in the gig, and, and it's really a guitar player's dream, man. It's great guitar riffs, great guitar solos, and you have your own guitar solo from, I mean, it's, you just don't get that on many gigs. Yeah, and, and you said you mentioned, and I was going to ask if you get a chance to play some of your original stuff, and you do, you play the solos. I saw one of your solos on a White Snake tour, not personally, but a video um, uh, last year sometime. And I've heard you're playing on that metal show, and I've heard it on your solo release, which was Dying to Live. Uh, I was going to ask, in terms of your guitar playing, who are your biggest influences? Uh, It's probably realistically nowadays, like the people that I I work with all the time, because that's who you end up learning from. And I'm always learning songs and learning from the guitar players that I work with or just musicians that I work with. Um, I had great teachers when I was young, my friend, all the way from back then. You know, my parents are classical musicians, so they influenced me, and uh, all the way from starting me on cello when I was three years old. And uh, Angus Young from ACDC made me want to start, so he's a big one for me. And uh, I mean, it, there's just too many, really, to name. I, I, I really admire and think you can learn from any guitar player. It's like as you you get older, you realize, oh, you you know, even if somebody is not as technically proficient, there's still things you can pull from their playing and their approach to playing. Um, So, hey, man, I just, I don't know, I just pick it up as I go. Yeah, Um, and as a guitarist myself, I've always wondered if there was a certain skill level that would allow a guitar player to play anything, and I thought you would be the perfect person to ask uh, because... You stand with all these amazing guitarists who came out of the hard rock and heavy metal scene. Uh, when you were learning White Snake's parts, did it get into your fingers easily, or did you still come to points where you're like, "How how did this guy do this?" Um. Uh, well, I think there's always that. I don't know. I mean, the, and the thing with playing music for me is that it's all relative. Like, I feel like every note can be approached. Like, playing rhythm, are you behind the beat? Are you on on top of the beat? Are you, um, do you have the right tone? Do you have, I mean, so it's always, I feel like your mind is always working towards playing better um, as you go. So I, I tend to be pretty critical of myself and my my performance and all that stuff. So, hey, it's always just a matter of hanging in there and doing the best you can and, like, putting in the time, you know, for any kids out there that are starting. It's it really so much is made of this, like, natural talent thing, and it's really, I don't know. I mean, I think to have the passion for it, yeah, maybe, but spending the time with it is really what it comes down to, putting in the work, and you have to, if you're going to, you know, make a living playing music, you have to treat it like a job and work really hard at it and try and make sure you're working harder than everybody else at it. Yeah. And how, I know you mentioned you're, you guys are having a good time on the road. Uh, you are the newest member to White Snake, right? Well, uh, yeah, a keyboard player technically came okay. in after the Purple album, but but in terms of the, the core members, I suppose so, yeah. And you guys have a great time on the road. Was it easy transitioning into the band? Yeah, it's like a bunch of comedians in this band. Yeah. It's really like, I, I swear, it's every night on the bus we're laughing to the point of tears. It's really, um, we got a few guys, including myself, that love to do imitations and voices. And so, you know, there's uh, there's just a lot of like really funny people. Our bass player, Michael Devin, is one of the funniest guys I've, I've ever worked with. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I know David Coverdale. He f- has some of the best tweets, and I know you guys are very into social media with all your fans. Uh, David's tweets always makes me laugh, and I always um, I found it very nice that when you released your solo album, you were posting the pictures of the fans with the album and talking to them a lot. Is that something you guys in White Snake are always doing, connecting with the fans? 
Yeah, I mean, it's nothing that's scripted. It's just that's something I've been doing since I started out. Um, I think that's kind of like the new model for um, being a quote-unquote rock star or whatever that is nowadays. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm just a guitar player making a living doing it. Um, but I appreciate the opportunity, and I appreciate like all the level of support from the fans. So I think that comes down to each individual. Personally, I enjoy the interaction with the fans, um, and most of them are my friends, you know, mm-hmm. and, like, they're just people supporting what I'm doing. So why on earth would I not want to be supportive of them in return or interactive? Um, so I do try and get back to everybody on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. I think it's it's part of it, and it's um, – it's it's one of the cool things about the social media thing. You actually get an opportunity to connect with the fans instead of uh, just wave to them from the crowd, and that's that, you know? Yeah. Uh, so did you go to school? Were you classically trained, or did you go to school for music at all? I did go. I did do, uh, When I finished high school, um, which I still – I always had private instructors leading up through high school – um, I spent a couple of years doing only classical guitar in college, um, where I wasn't playing much electric guitar during that time. Um, and then I went to GIT in Hollywood, which a Musicians Institute is the name of the school. GIT is the guitar division. Um, so I went there for basically a 12 month program, uh, which I honestly was just, I practiced so much during that time, but it wasn't necessarily the school. I hate to say, I just kind of, yeah. I just spent a lot of time playing guitar. I was playing guitar eight hours a day at that point. Um, but yeah, I, I'm like a mix of, uh, the real world and somebody who had some schooling. I basically after GIT, it's been all the real world education for me so since i was about 19 years old i've just kind of been um picking it up as i go yeah and it worked out because you've been a night ranger white snake and you've done all this wonderful solo stuff um i'm going to close out with one of your favorite white snake songs i'll play um maybe pick your favorite one and why it's your favorite um, okay, well, I don't necessarily have a favorite, but um, what do you feel like, rock or ballad or how about, how about Still of the Night? That's one of the, the yeah. great iconic rock tracks from White Snake. How about that? And it's got the cello in it, and do you, do you appreciate the cello playing cello? <laughs> yeah, I can't play cello anymore. Not anymore? I could probably barely play it when I was young. I was so little when I did that, but yeah. But yes, I appreciate it to answer your question. Uh, so before we go, can I just get a quick station ID? Uh, yeah. For, uh, so if you could just say something along the lines of, this is Joel Hoekstra from Whitesnake, and you're listening to 90.7 WCLH Wilkes-Barre. 90.7 CLH? WCLH. WCLH Wilkes-Barre. Yeah. 90.7 WCLH. <clears throat> Hey everybody, this is Joel Hoekstra of Whitesnake, and you're listening to 90.7 WCLH in Wilkes-Barre. And thank you once again for being on the show, and I hope, I mean, I'll be there to see you in Wilkes-Barre on July 2nd, and I'm sure a lot of people listening out there will be too. Awesome. We'll look forward to saying hi. Okay. Thanks for uh, taking the time today. Thank you. So have a great rest of the tour. See you July 2nd, and here's still the night. Decades of Metal. Decades of Metal. Decades of Metal. Metal Masters, playing the past and present of classic metal on Mondays from 3 to 5 on 90.7 WCLH.